joining us with more on that story and everything else making the headlines this morning is Ellen Gunning from the Irish Academy of Public Relations. Good morning, Ellen. Thank you for coming in. Um, what struck me in reading up on the story is, is more on Bolsonaro's comments. I mean, he took real exception to what President Macron said. Um, he said he regrets that Macron was seeking to take advantage of a Brazilian crisis and an Amazonian country crisis. To, to, for political gain. I mean, this isn't a problem. It, granted, it's a problem for Brazil and the Amazonian countries, but it's a problem that affects everybody. But I can actually see it from his point of view. Okay. What he's saying is that if you live in Brazil, mm. we need economic stability. We need to be able to feed our people. We need to give them a good standard of living. In order to do that, in his view, the Amazon is Brazilian, and therefore they can clear the Amazon, and they can give people an opportunity to farm. And he sees it as... His, his right um, to give the people their best future. This is his take on it. It also you, provides 20% of the world's oxygen. But it overlooks the fact, exactly, that the Amazon provides 20% of the world's oxygen and that we count on the rainforest. Yeah. But I was listening to um, people talking about uh, President Macron particularly, the, the G7 summit, and we need to do something about this. I think they, they've got it slightly wrong. Um, and you were talking to the deputy, I think he's got it slightly wrong as well. He was talking about there needs to be serious consequences. Part of what President Bolsonaro was saying is that you're being, uh, you're, you're on the outside looking in and you're, you're telling us what is good for Brazil. Mm. Nobody has yet said that if the G7 summit is going to discuss Brazil, a Brazilian should be there giving their take on it. I think what we need to do is, as a as a group, as a G7 summit or whatever, I think the world actually needs to say, if the Amazon forest is really important, and it really is, then what do we do to make sure that the Brazilians have the same quality of life that everybody else has, but they preserve the forest for all of us? I, I think we've got to make it much more an incentive, a carrot rather than a stick. I, I don't think the, the approach that Eamon Ryan was taking, which was saying there should be really serious consequences, I don't really think that will work. I think we need to sit down and say, what do you need? How can we help you get it? And the other interesting thing about beef is that we're now talking about, um, Leo Varadkar was saying that the Mercosur deal, uh, he may actually stop the Mercosur deal. But I'm not really sure what has changed since because the, the Amazon has always been cleared for the last number of years. There have always been fires. So all of this was known when the Mercosur deal was actually signed. The Brazilian uh, foreign minister, he was tweeting, he was condemning, and I quote, a savage and unfair international campaign against his nation. Is it, is it a savage and unfair? No, I don't think so. But I think we do suffer a little bit from, I've, I've been in the Amazon, and it was absolutely magnificent. It's a hell of an experience. You wouldn't want anybody to touch it. Mm. But I do understand where he's coming from, that the world is sitting there saying, bold boy, mm. you know, you shouldn't be doing this. But we're not actually offering them any other way around it. Whereas well, he's trying to, as he says himself, he's trying to rebuild Brazil. And he's also looking at it from a cultural imperialist point of view. He's saying, this is imperialism. You are telling us how to run our country and you shouldn't well, be. Well, it's so much to do with that politics. And really, the wider issue here is climate change, which should be apolitical. And if you're talking about saving the rainforest, that's fantastic. But the wider issue is at stake is climate change for the whole, you know, for the whole of the globe, not just one particular area. So how do we manage to uh, combat climate change and remain sort of apolitical? by doing so, or can we? I think we've got to actually incentivise Brazilians to keep the rainforest, but to continue to make a really good living, to con continue to be economically viable in a number of different ways. But I think we need to positively and proactively do it. I think we need to set aside whatever it is. It's not beef. Uh, because they need to clear the rainforest to do that. So what can Brazil produce that the world wants, or maybe just wants rather than needs, that we agree to support so that it gives them the economic stability that they want and they preserve the rainforest because the indigenous people who are living there really should be left to live there. It, it's, it's amazing that we still have people who live deep in the forest, but also from our point of view, it, just visiting the forest, looking at the, the nature that's around, it's fantastic. Mm. And the third element, a crucial element, is that, as President Macron said, this is the lungs of the world. Yeah. Our lungs are burning. We, fire. we need yeah. to do something. Yeah. Um, let's move on to uh, Brexit and to... Let's have a chat about Boris's week. He's had a busy week, hasn't he? He's had a very busy week. He's had a week. whirlwind tour of Europe, mm -hmm. and he's been received. Uh, he's been received well. I mean, they have pretty much Merkel and Macron have pretty much said to him, "Listen, we're happy to continue negotiating, but you need to give us some ideas. So you can't just say we're going to have creative uh, plans." He 
alternatives to backstops. You've 30 days. You fire them on. If you've got ideas, put them out on the table. There's none there. I thought the two meetings were fascinating. Yeah. I think Boris is having a ball. He and is, I think yeah. he's, he's playing to the home audience and saying, I'm out there and I'm going bish bash boom, uh, and I'm telling them all that you know, the backstop must go, uh, and I'm putting our position, which is exactly what he's doing. Do you think even he was pleasantly surprised that he didn't receive a frosty reception? In fact, Angela Merkel and Macron were almost were cordial. They were almost happy with them. I think they're cordial because they really don't see that there's much he can do, to no. be honest. So I, I think there's not much point in attacking him, but I thought Angela Merkel was really interesting. She's a, she's a politician who's around a very long time. She doesn't misspeak. She doesn't say things off the cuff. And she came up with this 30 days, but it might be resolved in, 20, in two years. It might be resolved in 30 days. You can come back to us with really good proposals. And what she has said is, we haven't actually closed the door, but we're not looking for anything. Yeah. You come back and tell us what it is you're going to present. But you see, Boris brought that back as a victory. But Boris's reaction was the, fascinating yeah. because he said, and what did he say? It's a, a very tight time scale or whatever. Yeah. All of the British media yesterday said 30 days to find a solution, yeah. which isn't what she said at all. No, it's not. But it was really interesting. And then he goes off to meet President Macron. And he's the, the tough guy of the team. And he's saying, you know, we're welcome. He was much... He took a slightly different approach to Angela Merkel. He was equally as pleasant, but he was much more on the side of, I don't think you can do it. Uh, the negotiation, you, it's not possible to renegotiate in yeah. 30 days, but we listen to you away. come up with something. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting week for Boris Johnson. Another interesting week next week, no doubt. Adam, thank no you very doubt. much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Alan.